Hey guys, welcome to the Punching In Podcast. I'm Richie with my co-host Dan, and today we'll go over UFC 268, last week's card. <laughs> Dan, you want to start? Stop, Stop right now. <laughs> Dan, Primo, uh, I'm getting some static in the background. Primo, I'm getting some feedback. They have a, a guest that needs no introduction. She speaks for herself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the one, the only, the team captain, Kayla Harrison. Primo, right. can, Primo, I lost the bet. I <laughs> thought she'd sit there for more than 12 seconds before she said something. Primo, can you cut her mic? All right, so we've got two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time PFL champion. More importantly, undefeated. More importantly, don't say AEW it. veteran. Oh, my God. God, this went sideways real quick, didn't it? And I'm out. Welcome, Kayla. Thanks for having me, guys. How are you? Started a little rocky, didn't it? Oh, man. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect nothing less. You look very sharp there. In the, you uh, like that? One Robert, of, is that a Robert Graham my, edition? Um, is that the of Robert my Graham? One people gave this to me. It was a very special gift. It looks I wear it. it with pride. You look like you. There you go. Look at I, him. He's blushing. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Rishi gave it to me, everyone. There you go. Told me he loved me. You're so sassy. Confessed his love, and I said, oh. <laughs> So coming off... <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this fucking <laughs> thing anymore, man. Jesus Coming off Christ. a second PFL championship. Yep. Congratulations. Are we really Thank talking you. about her? Yeah. It was so long ago, I felt I mean, like. I know. It's old news. All right. 12-0. and 0, You're kicking a little ass. I'm 12-0. and 0, Yeah. 12-0. and 0. Feeling good about yourself. Yeah. I mean, you know, I feel I'm happy. Feel okay with my performance, but ready for, the, ready for what's next. You know, hungry. So, so speaking of that, are you... You a free agent? Are you I am. re-signed with I'm PFL? I'm a free agent right now. Wow. So you're open to PFL, Bellator, UFC, mm-hmm. anything out there. Yeah. All takers. Wow. And isn't Fight there... Circus? Maybe not that one. No. That one, that okay. one, that one, that one, that one I might turn down. No, Mike is obsessed with that thing. I know he, he is. I, <laughs> Mike's bizarre. He posted it the other day and I was like, please tell me you're not actually watching this right now. They and literally had people fight in a phone booth. How great is that? And he was like, I'm obsessed. And then I was like, you want to see people are you making phone your booth? girlfriend watch this? And he was like, she said she wanted to. And I'm like, Mike, she lied. Like, nobody wants to watch this with you. Jesus. Just go watch a Gagey fight. You'll watch somebody fight in a phone booth. Mm. But uh, Oh, my gosh. I'm anyway. so excited I get to talk with you guys after these fights because yeah. they were so good. So before, let's let's keep talking about you, though. So your free agency, there's a <laughs> okay. there, there's there's a belt. I know it's going to be tough to pull something out of you. <laughs> hey, so there's a Bellator card this weekend with... Chris Cyborg on the card. Right yeah. in our backyard. Right, right, in someone, our, right in our backyard. I heard someone's coming to my backyard. I heard yeah. someone's coming into my town. We going to the fight? I might have to, might have to roll through, check it out, look yeah. at some future opponents. Yeah. What's, yeah. Your, what's your thoughts on her as a fighter? She called you out. Like, I remember early in your career, wasn't she tweeting at you or something? Yeah, she tries to stay relevant. You know, she, uh, I feel like anytime someone has any bit of press or anything, she chimes in and right. says irrelevant things. All right, well, and, and if you're interested in chiming <coughs> in or calling out, I think you're going to be within earshot. Where are you sitting for that show? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be cage side. So, Super Kayla Star. Harrison, cage side for Chris Cyborg, Bellator Friday night. You heard it here yeah. first. Going to be fun. Going to be a good time. How, how do you think a fight would go down between you two? I think I'd dominate. Yeah. Start to finish? I mean, realistically, you know, yeah. every fight is tough. You have to be smart. You have to be calculated. Be a cold killer in there. But... I have the utmost faith in my coaches and them developing a game plan, and I know I work harder than anybody else in the room, including her. And I just think that you know my career is going this way, and she's kind of she's on the end of her career, I would say. <clears throat> and and not to disrespect her at all, you know, I, I applaud what she's done. I think she's a great fighter. I think you know she paved the way, and I listen. You have to have respect for someone who's had such an uphill like climb to get to where she is like she no nobody wanted to promote her nobody really cared about women's mma nobody gave a shit nobody was you know banging down her door to endorse their brand or product or whatever and she just was so good that they couldn't ignore her and i respect that you know she just said i'm just gonna keep doing what i do and now she's in a a great position she makes good money she's you know living her best life from what it looks like and 
There's always a bigger, badder shark in the sea, though, isn't there? Always, always. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a little kale out there right now that's yeah. in, in five years from now, you'd be like, holy shit, this is uh, somebody got to keep an eye on there. there I mean, and that's what come. it's about. You know, that's what, you know, evolving the sport and growing the sport is about. Um, I'm excited to see the future Kalas, but yeah. it's not their time yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at on our mat, you know, and I see the kid uh, Evelyn out there. Yeah, 100%. Who's, 18 years old, Dan, I think, or 19. I forget what, how old she is. Evelyn? I think well, Evelyn's 19 and... 17 is the uh, and is Emily. And her sister's mm-hmm. 17. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they're they're both tough girls, but um, Evelyn's already started to fight. She's yeah. a couple fights into her career and undefeated yep. and, and just getting started. And great work ethic, great Absolutely. grappling background. She's in there training with you, who's no easy, mm-hmm. no easy go. You don't go easy on other girls. <laughs> and I think they started training at, like, age... Seven, yeah, like right. MMA think about that. training, yeah. right? Think about that. Credit, credit like, to their dad. Right now, in women's MMA, you have you're starting to see a crossover with athletes who had martial arts backgrounds, right? So you're starting to see the wrestlers, the kickboxers, the boxers, the judo players, the whatever it may be. So you're starting to see higher level athletes in the sport of MMA. Men's MMA is already at the point where there were guys who were training MMA from whatever age now right now is the time when women girls are starting to just do mma and they're starting to like come up so you see how evolved the men's side of it is and how how you don't have specialists anymore i mean you do have some special talents and special athletes but they're mma fighters and for women that time is coming and the evolution is just going to be it's so I feel like it's growing at such an exponential rate for women. You know, it's just exploded. Yeah, isn't is that what made Ronda so successful? She was able to put her game on everybody and nobody could stop her, obviously. Yeah, it was the beginning. It was kind of the, not the beginning of women's MMA, but it was the beginning of... Uh, well, she put it on the map in a yeah, certain respect. Yeah. But it respect. was the same thing like Kayla said. At yeah. one point, there were the Hoist Gracies of the world putting their game right, on exactly. people that had no clue yep. how to defend his right. game. And then it got to the point where... <laughs> young kids were growing up in the men's division and I remember saying 15 plus years ago holy shit imagine what's going to happen when these kids start fighting that all they know is MMA and you look at them and say well what's your background they say MMA or right. what are you better at right. all of it right and and I remember thinking wow when it hits that point this sport is going to be unbelievable and I didn't realize what would then happen once you got to that point plus those kids are stud athletes because mm-hmm. the stud athletes did not come to yeah. MMA right. years They're, back. And now you're getting these monster athletes that are not only training since they were young, yeah. but they are just elite right. athletes. And it's Well, you think about you think about kids who do martial arts. When I was a kid growing up, right? They were they were the kids who didn't get picked for the the team sports. You know, they were the kids who maybe got bullied. They were the kids who were a little weird. Or they were the kids who came from really tough neighborhoods. Which one were you? And I was... All the above? Yeah, obviously. Just genetically gifted and also weird. And <laughs> um, But you think about... They're kind of the misfits, right? Like, they're the kids that didn't really fit in, so they went and did this... Individual. This martial art or this thing. And that's, you know, the star athletes played football. They did baseball. They did this. They did that. And that's not the case anymore. Now you have star athletes doing MMA. Now you've got kids watching Conor McGregor. You're right, and, right. And, and the, the younger, the older ones that have watched GSP, and they're like, man, I want to do that. Right. And they're getting into it, and it went from saying, no, we I talked wanna... about it the other day. Remember you guys were saying, like, you couldn't believe how uh, nullified jujitsu has become in yeah. MMA? Like, because whatever, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was so so crucial to know jujitsu. And now, yeah, you got to know, like, how to defend. Of course, you got to know the basics, but almost impossible <laughs> you're not winning fights off your back you're not winning fights on your back if you go with just that in your in in your backpack you are in for a world but of that's shit that's how much the sport yeah. has evolved what was once literally <clears throat> the the most important thing yeah. has fallen by the wayside and i'm also blown away not just by that but by what the difference in athleticism can mean in a fight i mean it used to be back in jiu-jitsu where hey you know if you're at this level in jiu-jitsu and that guy's at this level in jiu-jitsu, if he's the bigger, stronger, heavier guy, okay, he can beat you. Mm-hmm. If the gap is like that, he's never going to beat you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Now it's almost like the same thing with athleticism. Yeah, he may be a better athlete, okay, but I'm a better fighter. I'm more well-rounded. I've got better cardio. I've got this. I can outlast. But it's starting to get to the point where, man, that athleticism means a lot. It does. And you get a guy who's fairly well-trained and good cardio, and you're not going to beat that guy if he's a better athlete. I think, I think... 
even more distinct. It's not just athleticism. It's the cardio. Like, if you want to get really down to brass knuckles, like, if you don't have an excellent gas tank in the sport of MMA, you're going to struggle to win fights. I think the last time I asked Brownie what skill set he thought was the most important of all, I think cardio was his number one. I mean, if you're going to be naturally gifted something, God, please make it cardio. You know, please bless me with those lungs. Well, that was Iowa's in wrestling, that was Iowa's secret sauce for so many years was just outwork everybody, mm-hmm. have a great cardio system, and then come that third period, you're going to wear them down and just, you mm-hmm. know, you're going to break, gonna, you're, you're break, break them and take over the match. So was it, you know, if you don't have good cardio, you, uh, cardio makes cowards of us all kind mm. of thing. Oh, that's so, a good one. Yeah. It's fatigue so, makes cowards of us all. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Excuse us. Oh, sorry, Dan. <laughs> okay. B minus. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Fat. Yeah, that too. Are we gonna Go ahead. Are we gonna shame him right now or what are we gonna Okay, sorry. If you're to ready me. to open that door. No, no, no. <laughs> I am <laughs> ready to dive in <laughs> feet first. Who's gonna have more bones <laughs> skeletons flying out of that closet? All right. But uh yeah, for sure. It's one of the major components of, of being a good fighter, right? You you see Dan, so many talented fighters in the gym or just fighting is God, this guy's got what a skill set. But he doesn't train and he's fucking gassed out in the first round. You're like, Jesus, what do you how are you gonna finish? How are you gonna put your game on anybody? You can't. You definitely need a good gas. Fifteen tank. plus years ago you could have just because the the level was so much lower, you could right. dominate and overwhelm mm-hmm. someone mm-hmm. and get out early before it became a factor. But even then Not it was now. frustrating. There's so to- many different things that are coming into play now too. Number one, people know how are starting to learn how to train. You know, so like right. pe- the le- like people are understanding like, oh I can't just hit my head against the wall every single day for three hours and, and win, right. you know? So even just the way people are training is, is evolving. I think too, I would say the number two most important thing in MMA is the mindset is the, like the it factor a right. little bit, you know? Cause I see so, I, I've never understood it, but I see so many guys like in here who are killers and I'm just like, how is this guy not a world champion? But then you watch them fight and they go out there and something happens and they can't put it all together the way that they do in here where they're just like beating people, like abusing people. So did did you learn how to become <laughs> mentally tough is what you're saying? Or did you have that through through training in all the competition I mean, in I judo? Think, or were you like already mentally tough? Or I think just, for me personally it was, it was a combination, right? Like I, for whatever reason, for, as a young child, I always had like an internal drive. Like I always wanted... I was a people pleaser, right? Like that's, I wanted to get straight A's and I wanted everyone to pay attention to me and I wanted to like, whatever. I've always been a little bit of a people pleaser, but I mean, no one ever told me to get out of bed at 5 a.m. and go for a run. I was 12 years old doing that, you know? Nobody ever told me to come come straight home from school and do your homework. No one ever told me like, hey, you should probably practice twice a day. I just, I wanted to because I wanted to be the best. <clears throat> and it got really hard. Like there were points where, I was like, man, you know, fuck this. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. But because I had spent years being disciplined doing it and having people around me telling me, no, you're going to do this, like the Pedros, that, that uh, mindset of like, no, I can overcome anything was already, like that muscle was already so strong. So I think it was a combination of both for me, for sure. What's your biggest transition? Um, well, the toughest transition from going from the judo background <laughs> Just amateur stuff into mm. into the world of MMA. I got to get that in. Into the world of MMA. Uh, what was your biggest, you know, <clears throat> difficulty? In the sports side of it, or the or just like overall. You you tell me. Mm, biggest challenge would probably, you know, honestly, it's just such a different world. You know, you go from being the top dog in what you do. You know, two time Olympic champion the best there ever was in America. Like, sorry, I had to throw that in. I saw that. Um, (laughs) Primo, cut that out. Uh, And then you come over to this other sport and you're, you know, the small fish in the pond again. And you're kind of like, am I really, am I going to, am I going to put myself through this? Did you feel like a small fish in a pond when you walked in here? Are you kidding me? Talk about insecure. Say it. I was a sm- I'm still a small fish in my mind, you know, like there's so many people who have done amazing things in this sport here and continue to do it. Like for me, 
I still feel like that small fish. I still feel like that white belt walking in for her first class. And, like, the fact that I get to train with Mike Brown and Anderson and Mako and all of the coaches here, like, I still, I don't know. It's awesome. It's intimidating at times. But it's, I don't know. I love my life. Like, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe it some days. Like, I get to beat people up for a living and, like, make millions of dollars and live in sunny South Florida and, talk to this handsome man right here are you kidding me and for Uh, the record that's me not you dan i never doubt (laughs) (laughs) so go ahead dan chime in with a couple you got anything for kayla i'm still trying to process the part where she said she was such a people pleaser because at what point did you lose that characteristic oh my gosh no i when did she join the team (laughs) and she walked in the door (laughs) no you think she's a diva is that what you're saying no, I don't think she's here to please anybody <laughs> but herself. No, do you, I was saying, do you think she's a diva? I mean, I guess no, you guys. I, think she's I guess a you fucking guys have bitch. Oh my wow. god! Sorry. Holy shit! But I mean that in a well, gloves guess, are bad way. <laughs> gloves are off. Well, then I guess I'll have to say that you just had a positive impact on me in that way. You made me realize that it's MMA about you. <laughs> is a very selfish sport, and you have a very short shelf life. And you made it abundantly clear when I walked in here that you don't care about me. You don't care about them. You don't care about anybody or anything but gold. And I was like, hmm, I can respect that. And I can embody that. I can embrace that. All truths. I care, I see no, I I care see about no you, problems. Kayla. I care about you, You Kayla. don't give a... No, he does. I think, I think he might. He does. I eh, and I probably will too once you retire. I don't if know. You're, if I you're still know. undefeated. <laughs> See, this exactly. is like a Bill Belichick, Tom Brady dynamic going on right here. <laughs> oh, man. At Crazy. what point were you here when you no longer <laughs> felt like a newbie, you know, the, the bottom of the barrel mm-hmm. just starting mm-hmm. to learn? I mean, obviously it's changed over. You've been here, what, three years? Yeah, three. 2018? Yeah. Was it after winning your first title? Was it getting to the point where you were doing really well against higher level people? What? what? I mean, I think... I don't know. I, I, I mean, something something clicked with you because I, I remember coming in one day and seeing just a whole different person where you, I used to watch you train and I could see you like thinking about stuff yeah. and worrying about stuff. And if, if something didn't go your way in the training, you'd get all frustrated yeah. by it and, and you'd still be training with someone sparring, but I could see you like beating yourself up at the same yeah. time. Why didn't I yeah. do that? Or why did it? And then like one day, and that's not overnight, obviously it's a process, but I remember watching one time and saying, oh shit, yeah. something clicked with her because she's not stopping. She's not thinking. She's just fucking people up. You know what happened? I think that at the time I didn't realize was going to be a good thing for me. But that year when uh, PFL took last year, when PFL took a whole year off and I didn't have a fight to train for and I was just coming in and getting better and not focused on an opponent and not focused on a season and not focused on a million dollars and not focused on another belt. When I was just coming in to train and it became like it became my only outlet. I also got two kids. Like it became this thing where I was like, I have to go train. And I just focused solely on that for that hour and a half that I was there. I got so much better. I feel like I became so much more relaxed, like the, t- the distance, the timing, the things that take time to it. There's nothing, you can't do anything, but just keep working at that. Like there's, you can't just instantly understand distance and range. You can't just instantly relax when someone punches you in the face. I think it all kind of came together at that, that year. You know, I had been training for a while. I'd been getting punched in the face for a while. I'd been working on all of those things. And then I didn't have the stress of, okay, I have another fight. You know, there is stress that goes into that being undefeated, being whatever the PFL champion, lots of money on the line. Like it does make training more stressful, whether you are subconsciously doing it or not. Like you get, I get mad at myself. I get pissed off. I'm like, and I'm still mad at myself, but I had nothing. Like the only job was to get better. So because of all the time I had put in and not having a fight, I feel like that year things really started to settle for me. So it was a blessing and a curse that you had that year off. You fought one time in Invicta, I remember. Yep. And uh, I know you were super happy about getting a fight and you were pumped, but then you you know, you fought, you won and you were kind of right back in the gym. But uh, we talked about it before. We see the most gains is not during a training camp. You don't really gain that much during yeah. a training camp. You're fine-tuning yourself for the opponent. You're getting better right. between camps, and you're getting ready in yeah. camp. And you see so many people that just 
say, hey, I fought. I won't get into the gym until there's a fight announced or I'm getting close. Mm. And it's you lose that window of time to train. And we've talked about it before. There's a, every, every athlete has a short window of time where they're going to be great. And then yeah. they start to level off and go down. So take advantage of it. And I, and I know you do. You're a gym rat. So it's it's. I think it's easy yeah. for you. Yeah, and it's way. not like I was ever, you know, prior to last year, it's not like I was ever not – I had four fights every year pretty much. So it wasn't like I was – having a fight and then taking a month off and then doing another eight week camp. Like I was still in the gym every day, yep. but it's a different kind of training when you know there's a date, when you know there's an opponent. I think there, it's just, there's something different about it. And I had never really experienced that before that kind of stress because in judo, like you compete every month, you right. know, it's like, and sometimes you win and you don't win them all. And at least I didn't. So it was like, the but when you lose, thing, you don't go to the bottom of the rankings and everybody thinks you're a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. Like nobody – yeah, it's not a big deal if you lose the German Grand Prix, you know. Like nobody cares. As the, they only care about the Worlds and the Olympics. That's all I ever cared about. So those were the only things I ever peaked for. And they were – one one was one a year and one was every four years. So that pressure, I only really felt – one time a year. But in MMA, you're right. Every fight fucking counts. Every, Every fight. fight matters. Yeah. Especially when you're at, you know, where you're at in your career right yeah. now. Um, you lose one fight and there's shit all over you. Right. And it kind of reminds me of watching Clarissa Shields fight um, kind of <coughs> as an Olympic gold medalist in boxing. She's mm -hmm. a you know, boxing champion, mm -hmm. got the pedigree, and she goes in there and she lost. And, uh, you know, you see everybody coming out, to, out of the woodworks to shit on her. And uh, I think Dana was right when he kind of, kind of came out and defended her because it's true. I mean, she she went into a whole nother sport. She handled it like a pro. She yeah. took a loss. She's got some holes in her games or, or gaps in her game. Yeah. And um, she'll, she'll I mean, actually I think get that's better. Really on, I think that's on her team a little bit more than it's on her, you know. But yeah, that's, that's just not for me to say. I mean, it might just be the approach. She, yeah. You know, ideally, she should have taken a couple of years to yeah. get ready, a year and a yeah. half to get ready and maybe start in really small local shows. Um but maybe it's her mindset. I don't want to start like that. I want to go. And maybe she realizes you lose early in your career in this sport. It doesn't really matter as mm -hmm. much. I mean, I wouldn't have taken that approach probably. But yeah. I can't, can't. I kind of got to applaud her for the approach she took. She, she and it did. Man, after that match, she she wasn't all disappointed. Yeah. She still seems confident herself. But it's interesting you say that about the year off because I remember how upset you were. Yeah, when I they canceled you were, like, that season. Off a ledge, pretty much. Every you were day. on a ledge. You were ready to <laughs> kill somebody. <laughs> Sue everybody, <laughs> kill everybody, maybe v v vice versa. And I remember thinking, I think I remember saying, dude, if you're like Fabricio Verdum at the yeah. end of your career and you miss a year, that's a big deal. But if you miss a year early in your career, you, you no, just I take the time and get better. No, I remember arguing with you about it. Like I was like, no, like I'm in the prime of my career. They're taking a whole year away from me. I'm in the prime. They're taking food off my table. Like I was very, I was very adamant that it was a bad thing for me. Yeah. And you were like, listen, you're here. You're getting better. Like you were like so nonchalant and like chill about it. And that made me hate you too. Like I was angry at you. I was like, be on my side. Like, fuck them. Let's sue them all. You know, See like, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got better for the record. I hate them too. So <laughs> and, and something clicked when you got it. I mean, it's just, you can no, see when it clicked. Yeah, you know what clicked is, you know, your, your striking got a lot better. You felt a lot better and a lot more comfortable on your stand-up. Yeah. And, and that's what eases your mind when you're in there. You're not burning so much energy. You're not thinking oh. so much. You're reacting. I think and, she got a lot more comfortable on the ground, too, because it's so much different than what she was doing mm -hmm. before. And she was always thinking. And mm -hmm. if something doesn't go your way in the short period of time they may give you in judo, what happens? You just stand up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But when you miss something in this... The person jumps up or gets out or reverses you, yeah. and then you're in a bad position. Yeah. You use the energy to get him down, and then you wasted it. So it's like you were just yeah, but thinking, I, thinking, thinking. No, there was so much – yeah, there was – I had so much more experience just because I was in the gym training every day, working on the stuff that I needed to work on. I had – you're right. Like when you are able to find that space where you relax yeah. in a fight, your cardio gets better by 50%, yeah. you know? And that was one thing I was always nervous about, my cardio. I was like, oh, my God, like – I, I knew I could do five rounds because I'd done it with Larissa, but I was always like, dude, I never used to be this tired in judo. Like, what is wrong with my body? Am I just not built for MMA? Like, is there something wrong with me? And then I finally started to relax, and I finally started to just be like, I, I, I really used to be, in my head, if I got punched in sparring, I felt like I was losing the round. And I would be like, I got to take him down. I got to, you know, like I would freak out in my head every time. And once I stopped doing that, and once I kind of realized, like, oh, okay, like, 
it's okay. <laughs> Everybody's going to get hit. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody with really bad cardio physically isn't going to get good cardio just by being mentally strong or mentally confident right. with it. But somebody with good cardio can make themselves have bad cardio exactly. in their mind. No, exactly. There's definitely a percentage exactly. of it that's mental. It's just they stress themselves out. We've seen it with a, quite a few <laughs> fighters where they overthink it. I mean, you can be against a cage somebody with an underhook and you can sit there probably for five minutes and feel relaxed because you've been in that mm-hmm. position a hundred times. Mm-hmm. As soon as you guys break and now it's, you got to get exactly. your hands up. You know, you, you, you could see you tense yourself up, but now I could see your whole game kind of a little bit more relaxed. For sure. You don't have I mean, to watch I, your takedowns as Yeah, much. I'm definitely still obviously not where I want to be, but I do feel like I've made just uh, big strides in, yeah. that, in that aspect. Like my striking's not the best in the world. I'm never going to be the best striker in the world. I'm probably never going to be, you know, having crazy knockouts or anything like that. I hope not. Yeah, we know. I know. Don't worry. But... It'll come. Or it won't. But I'm confident... Or it will. Okay, when she goes and fights someone who's better <laughs> at takedowns go. and better on the go. ground than she is, then it, then maybe she needs it. She's, I just... I Obviously, you want to improve every aspect of your game, but you don't ever want to fool yourself <laughs> into becoming something you're not. And how many times have you seen people of want to Can't. submit someone when they're a striker or right. sh- knock someone out when they're a grappler? Tail is old as time, right? Like yeah. we just see it happen over and over and over again. Don't worry. That's the difference between me and most uh, most of the fighters in this gym is I feel like I have a I have a brain in here. Wow. <laughs> so you're saying the fighters <laughs> on the gym that are on this team don't have no, brains? No, is that no, what that's you just not said? What I'm she, what I'm she means just Masvidal. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean. I, there's definitely like one or two brain cells left max in that kid's head. What's going on between you two guys? What's happening? Just another, you know, kind of like you, in love with me, doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> Just like overwhelmed with the emotions. Wow. Yeah. Overwhelmed. Okay. All right. right. Let's talk about the show last week. You were there, right? Where? At the Madison Square Garden yes. show? Yes. Holy shit. Balls. Was it as good live as it oh, looked on my, TV? I can't believe you. Well, Electric, I can't believe huh? you didn't go, but it was amazing. Amazing. Really good fights. Did really you, good show. Did you go up there specifically for the card? I was just hanging out. Okay. That's all you're getting, Richie. <laughs> <All right. laughs> what was your favorite fight of the night? It's probably the same as everybody else. I mean, else's. obviously, yeah. everyone loved Gaethje, Gaethje and um, Chandler. Chandler. Yeah. I, dude, <laughs> when he, like, when Chandler at the end, like, he, like, blew some blood out of his yeah. mouth and he just, like, started walking forward, I was like, are these even human beings anymore? Like, what are they? Are they what? What, what has possessed them? The craziest part of that fight was the prevailing <laughs> wisdom: is both guys do a lot of damage. Neither guy's overly concerned with defense, which makes for fun fights. But Gaethje and both guys get hurt. But Gaethje's more durable when he's hurt was mm. what most people would think about the fight. They're like, yeah, they're probably both going to get hurt, but Gaethje has a better chance of surviving when he gets mm. hurt because mm. when Chandler gets hurt, he doesn't recover as quick. Dude, these guys were taking shot after shot after shot, and they were both durable as fuck. No, it was crazy. But- I don't know. I still, like right now, I have to go back and rewatch it. I do not know how Chandler survived that. Was it the first round where he I, got... Uh, I thought Chandler won the first round. No, it, it must have been the round. I mean, it was second kind of, round then? When did he get dropped? He got dropped, he get dropped in the second, the second round. Okay, second so round I, do not, I, really still Hard. Do not, I still I still do not know how he survived that. Like Big I was uppercut. like, Yeah, what? the uppercut, the uppercut. Because I saw it, and it was like, and the blood, and I was like, and then he like, <laughs> he's you know, dead, he's You know dead. what was, was crazy to me, Dan, when we were watching it, was not only the big punches that these guys were taking, and, and like you said, the, the wisdom was, hey, somebody's jaw's going to fail them in this fight, that's what's going to end up happening. How about the leg kicks that Chandler took early on, and, mm. it, and it seemingly had no effect, but these were Dead on leg mm. kicks to the calf that mm. usually crushes the guy. Well, you and know it had an effect because it's impossible but, not to have an effect. <clears throat> he, it didn't. You, you started to see it have an effect in that second and third round, but early on he walked through him. It's 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 crazy because it's probably the best Chandler's looked in a loss. I would in, say in any fight in a loss. I, mean, I think he, he lost his he fight, but he stops fighting. He's got a career in poker. Yeah, because no, you know right? that leg Are was killing him. No, and I, he no, tremendous. He didn't talk about mental toughness. No, t- yeah. that's what I mean. Like I ha- had so much more respect after yeah. that fight for him. I don't, I don't, I haven't followed his career super closely. But after that fight, I had to go look, and I was like, oh, he might be a pretty cool, dude. But just watching him, his composure in that fight, and watching his, like you said, mental toughness, his ability to just like take damage, keep bite coming down forward, on that yep. mouthpiece, and. Yeah. And that's an I example like, of both guys coming out of the fight stronger than they went into it. I will never have a fight like that. <laughs> I mean, this guy just <laughs> lost a fight, 
And I thought it was an easy <coughs> fight to score. He clearly lost the fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the talk now is maybe him fighting Connor. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and I could see it. I mean, yeah, for sure. He came out of that fight stronger than he went into it. The guy's one and two in the no, UFC. No, his stock and went he's up. Like, his stock went up. Stocks through yeah. the roof. Yeah. Crazy, crazy fight, you know. But Geechee has that uh, has that amazing ability to make people's stock go up, right? Like no matter what, like, if yeah. he if he beats you or if you lose to him or if you beat him, like your stock is gonna rise because that kid just makes fights. He doesn't know how to be in a boring fight. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's just must see TV. Yeah, you know, he, he just is. is. Yes. So hopefully, no. so hopefully DP wins the title, and DP and not hopefully when DP wins the title. Good call, and uh, you know he gets a chance, and they they go at it again. That that's you know, hey, raise the pay per view price. Oh my God, Here's a tip: me. go raise that pay per view price to two two fifty five hundred bucks. I don't care what it is; I'd pay it and go give half the proceeds to the fighters because they're going to deserve it. Well, that will never happen. Yeah. What a, just a dream. Aren't you really cute and sweet? What would happen if you own the UFC? No, I'm not. Okay, no. Relax, okay? Don't. Uh, uh, see what I mean? Every guy with money protects the guy with money. This is so typical. Uh, it's just, just, every, just a, everybody just wants. Together. Everybody wants the fighters to do as well as they can, me included, because mm -hmm. um, we take a percentage. Um, but the but fact of the matter is, when you're running a yeah, business. Yeah, this is bullshit. This is something we need to talk about. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> when, when you run a business, if people are willing to come, we talked about this when we talked about yes. the possibility of yeah, starting no, a union or what. Yeah, the fighters are their own worst enemy. The 100%. fact of the matter is, if people are willing to do that job for this amount of money as a business owner, especially when you're now a public entity and you're so driven by profits, you know, it's like. I mean, you got to feel like you. It's a little bit scummy, though, Dan. Come on, like you don't. You don't lose a rough any, word. You don't lose any sleep over that. Like that's. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I ran some businesses before I retired. Thank God. Um, <laughs> Ran them into the ground. And <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we had a – I was in the cruise business. We owned a cruise ship. And I could hire Filipinos who were working at this amount per hour and would take a bullet for the company because they are so grateful to have that job and send it all home. And craziest work ethic of anybody I've ever seen in my life with the <laughs> Filipino staff on our you ship. You haven't seen Kale Harrison, but um, – Or well, you could hire – Three percent Filipino. No, <laughs> or you could hire people from other parts of the world. So and, is Dan. <laughs> and they would need to work. They would want this amount of money. Yeah. And they'd work less. I mean, I'd be hard pressed to say as a ship owner, oh, let me hire people from different parts, or let me pay these people more than they they need. They're already as happy as it can be and work as hard as it can be. It's like maybe the fighters are their own worst enemy, and they need to to, to do something differently, or their agents need to. But yeah, we talked about this before. Right. No, it's, it's hard to fault a business yeah. owner. For hey, I was just making a comment that both these guys deserve to be on a pay-per-view. And if it was 500 bucks, no, I'd pay no, for no. it. No, no, You want to talk I, about the hard topics? Let's talk about the hard topics. We, we but I'm did. not here Kayla, to make anybody Kayla, like Kayla, a, we already did. We talked about this in podcast previous. Okay. She doesn't listen to your podcast. I know. I, uh, but go ahead. Spout off. No, no. I mean, I'm not here to make anyone a villain. I get it. Like, obviously, that logic makes sense. It just sucks when you're on the other side of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I don't know. I don't have the answer. I don't know what the resolution is, but it's to me, it's it's frustrating as hell to see how lopsided and how you know. I can't. I mean, it's just. Do you think you're paid what you're worth? Yeah, I wouldn't accept less. Okay, but you're a free agent now, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you've you've got nothing to complain about when, yeah. in how you've been handled and treated. I, but, I'm not complaining. But, but you are one of the very few. But that's haves, what I mean. I, and there's I have, a lot of have-nots. I have the luxury of having been compensated well from my very first fight. But you, you know? came in as a two-time Olympic <laughs> champion, and she, she reminds us every day, I, every fucking. Day. I do not. I you literally call me an amateur every day I walk into the gym. So I don't call you an amateur anymore. I call you, you champ. Say, now. Nobody gives a shit about that amateur stuff. That okay? was early. That was nah, early nah, on. Nah, 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 nah. But for everyone. Even. Kayla Harrison that comes in and on day one starts getting There's paid 500, well. There's yeah. 500,000. <laughs> I mean, 500,000 guys who are getting paid nothing. Yeah. And then there's 500,000 guys behind them who will take less than nothing. That's the issue. That sucks. Like, what? I don't I mean, I don't know what the answer is. But maybe, maybe my opinion is also slanted by the fact that I remember when guys were – I remember Minotaro Nogueira yep. being with him in his first fight. It was at a show I put on, and we paid him 100 bucks. 
You yeah. know, and, no, this and, is the you problem piece of too. Shit. So there's always, <laughs> no, there's always. But these, he had no like, name. He wasn't sorry. He he, he had no name. He wasn't selling there, tickets. It was his first there's fight. There's nothing you could say. There's yeah. nothing you could say to justify paying that man a hundred dollars to get in the cage and do what we do. There's nothing you could say. I don't care if he didn't have a name. I don't care if he was just starting out. I don't like. There's nothing you could say that will justify that. To me, there's nothing you can say that justifies paying someone who goes in there, puts on fights for your promotion, has a fight like that. Or, I mean, there. Every fight is fucking competitive too. When you get to the highest okay, level. Okay, stop right there. Let me ask you a question. There's no way to justify that, which I did. I lost fifteen thousand dollars on that show. So should I have paid him two hundred and lost fifteen thousand one hundred dollars? Should I paid him ten grand and lost twenty five thousand on that show? And you I know this is like not. You're not a good promoter. <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm taking away. Nobody from knew that. what the fuck MMA was. It was like 1999. <laughs> hey, let me bring in some guy from Brazil and hold the show in Georgia, and hopefully they know no, who the fuck he is. No, but it's also, but this is also the problem, right? Because there's all these people. Orlando. That was Orlando. Oh, all right. these people who started the sport, like you guys, you old fucks, you're all still here. And, Thank God. <laughs> and you all say like, oh. You shouldn't complain. You have no idea how bad it was in the old days, you know? Like, there's, like, all of this, like, there's that mentality still. But, yeah, motherfucker, it was like that back then. But it doesn't have to be now, and it shouldn't be. Progress, you're supposed to make progress. The UFC has made ridiculous progress. Progress, schmogress. I mean, how? what is their company worth right now, you know? More but, than $4 billion. Right. So if you look at how much money they were worth when they started and how... Like, what percentage have they grown? How much How much have they grown? If you look at what fighters were paid when they started and how much it's grown, it's not on the same, it's not on the same trajectory. Capiche? Mm, I don't know about that. It's if, definitely not. If an entry-level UFC guy was getting a grand before, now they're getting 15 20 grand 15. Or, what or are they 20 grand? Show. No, it's like 15 get, and 15, I think, the first okay, level. 30, they, they bumped it maybe, to 10 and 10 was a big deal. Now they've seen they move it up a little. Maybe you make $30,000. And if you fight twice a year, you're getting, you know? But that's 30 60. times. If you win, and you, then if you, you win, make it goes 60, up. and then taxes, and then fees, and then this, hey. and then that. It's just or, not, it doesn't make you, sense or to can, me. Or you can work for the city, and you can go get $32,000 a year. Or, I mean, there's arguments on both sides. and But you know I what mean, it comes down to? In life. It comes down to the strength of, of negotiating when you look at the other sports that are paying yeah. 45, 50%, and the UFC is paying 25 ish percent. You know, but. That's really generous. Um, I'm just talking the numbers that get reported. I don't believe really anything of what I. Here, pretty sure it's half like of what 13%, I see. Percent, but okay. Pretty sure based on what? I mean, I read it somewhere. Do you have a gripe? <laughs> do you have a gripe with Dana White? Is that what I'm sensing? Absolutely here? not. Okay. Absolutely not. Be careful there, young lady. I'd be careful of what? Just fucking with you. <clears throat> so what's next for you? He better be careful. I'll tell you what. Oh Keep yeah. Talking all that shit to me. What did he about say? Me. What did he say? No, he's just. I know both of you pretty. F- Pretty He's, well. Wait, wait, and my on. advice is they probably both ought to be really careful because <laughs> they're both going to end up bloody as fuck in that one. He'll eat his words. <laughs> I'll make him I'll make him chew those. <laughs> and you have know you what? Met, when he does, he'll probably do it with a smile. Yeah. Have you ever I met know him? he will. Have you ever met Dana? I met Dana one time, and it was the most awkward moment of my life probably. You made him feel awkward? No. Oh. There was a UFC card uh, in Boston when I was back before I did MMA. <laughs> and uh, I think I just started training, maybe, at Delagratis or something. And I went to the card, and my buddy owned a restaurant in Boston that Dana went to. I taught, I taught the guy's kid um, judo. He, I'm, I'm really good friends with him. But he was like, oh, man, Dana's going to be at the restaurant. you got to come. I want to introduce you. da 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 and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I was like, whatever, that'll be fun. And I was with someone at the time. So me and this person go in to the restaurant after the fights, and it's closed. And it's just Dana with a room full of people. They're having dinner. Like, they're in the middle of their meal. And we walk in, and he, the guy I'm with is like, oh, this is Kayla Harrison. You got to meet her. Uh, she's going to fight for you someday, and you, she's the best thing, and da 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 And then he's like, oh, and this guy fights for you too already, and like da 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 And I had to go around, and I literally shook every person's hand at the table, and the guy was like, oh, cool. Like, Dana was like, nice to meet you. Like, you could tell he was just like, what? Like, why is this happening in the middle of my meal? And I was so embarrassed. Like, I wanted to be like, this wasn't my idea. Like, 
don't judge me, but no it was, wonder why Dana hates her. <laughs> I mean, I hated me too that night. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, oh. but because can you imagine? Like, I'm sure you get he gets. Like, I can't even imagine having to how many people he has to hear that they're going to be the next big thing or great or this or that. I mean, the difference is it's actually true with me, but he didn't know that. He doesn't know that. He still doesn't know that. And everybody believes it to be true. And if you don't believe it to be true, you probably shouldn't be in the business in the first place. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Well, you're in a good spot in your career right now. I mean, you're 12-0. and 0, You're undefeated. You're a two-time PFL tournament champion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're a free agent. Mm-hmm. So Life it's a, is good, it's, man. It's good to be Kayla Harrison right now, it's, isn't it? Uh, it's good to be me right now. Yeah. Yeah. You lean in one way or the other on where you think you might be going or not? Um, Can we get it out of you here today? Can we get a big scoop here or no? No. Not going to get it. All right. Well, it's good that you got options. Are we only going to talk about the Gaethje fight? Don't you guys like... We Don't you only... guys break down all the fights? We're, not, let's, well, we were, we're done talking about what, me. What was your second favorite fight? What did you think of the main event? No, I like the main event. Uh, dude, you know what was so... I was inspired by the main event. I was... Kamaru's uh, fight IQ and just his, uh, like, he, he just, I was just super impressed with him to see it live, to see his takedown D, to see, like, just you, how quickly. His takedown too. Yeah, but also just how quickly he can transition from one thing to the next so seamlessly. Like, I've seen Colby train. I've watched Colby break people. I've watched Colby... You know, he may not have the best technique, but he's going to grind. I think Colby's game plan still is a little stupid, but whatever. But he did try to wrestle this time, and it's still he couldn't he couldn't take him down. He couldn't uh, he couldn't break him. Yeah. And I think he just like I was just super impressed. It was it was uh, that's like a different level. You know, yeah, they were they were both on another level. I mean, I think that right now they're the best two welterweights <laughs> in the world. I mean, they fought they have fought ten rounds. And Kamara's won six of them mm. on the majority of the scorecards, mm. and Colby's won four of them on mm. the majority of the scorecards. No, for sure. So they're, I mean, the fight was competitive. It mm-hmm. was very competitive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're both really fucking good I know. at what they do. I know. I think the difference is Usman has power. I think so, too. And it makes a big difference. Well, I think that uh, you could tell, I, I don't know what Colby's game plan was for this fight or anything. I, I expected him to want to wrestle more and get kind of get in there, get in the clinch, get dirty, just, like, chain wrestle, wear him down. I thought that was his game plan, was supposed to be his game plan for the first fight, but whatever. Um, And you could tell he was a little hesitant to get close. You know, like, I I just felt like he didn't want to, he didn't want to fuck with not only the power, but he also was, like, then you could see when he wasn't getting the takedowns, he was, like, I don't want to fucking keep doing this and not getting the take. Like, you could tell it, it, he was hesitant. Yeah, could in have been my from, mind. Could have been from getting his jaw broken the last fight. He felt his power and thinking, yeah. "Hey, I don't want to be in, yeah. in the range and, and, and take that damage yeah. again." You know. But he also got dropped twice in the <clears throat> second round of this fight. Yeah. Right? Yet came back to win a couple rounds after that. I think it's. I think the difference in the power is not just what it does to Usman's game, but what it does to Colby's game, vice versa. Mm-hmm. Because Usman knows that Colby doesn't have the big power, mm-hmm. and Colby was connecting. And it looked like Usman was willing to take a shot Mm -hmm, knowing that he mm -hmm, could then counter mm -hmm. with a shot, knowing that his shot was going to do more damage. And it was. was. And I think Colby realized that too, which had had to make him a little more hesitant about staying in the pocket to land a second or a third shot, knowing that the counter is coming. Yeah. It's a power changes a lot. For sure. I was going to ask you a question. So in watching that fight, I almost feel like Usman has more to give in the fight. I almost feel like he. he no, that's he what holds I mean about fight IQ, though. Like I think he just does a really excellent job of uh, pacing, maintaining, yeah. um, knowing where he's at in the fights, knowing if he's up or down, knowing if his back's close to the cage. Just like just little things that, as a fighter, you have to learn to not have to. Like you say, you always. I used to think about everything. You have to. You have to teach your body not to think about those things. You just have to become aware of those things, and I think. He is at that level where he's champ for a reason, and it's all connect. Like he's everything is like. If you watch his fights in the beginning of his career versus now, he's not a. We I have. Mean, <laughs> I know, but he's not a wrestler in a cage. You know what I mean? That that's why I was inspired because I, I I can see, I, that's always my biggest gripe, right? Like I don't want to be a judo player in a cage. I want to be a mixed martial artist. I want to be well rounded fighter, and he 
has reached that, and it's made him the best in the world. I was really impressed by both guys because I know Usman has gotten better. Because you love Colby and miss him? I don't like either one of those guys. Um, <laughs> not kidding. Um, You're both not all, kidding? They've both all been pretty good to me outside the cage. Yeah, Can't yeah. Can't argue with either one of them. Yeah. Um, but in that fight, from the last fight to this fight, you've seen Usman's striking game develop, mm-hmm. and he, he's moved over to – to train with Trevor Whitman, mm-hmm. who's a specialist in striking. That's mm-hmm. probably 80% of what his training is going to be. Mm-hmm. And you've seen it get better. You've seen him finish fights mm-hmm. since. Mm-hmm. And taking that as a as a given that his striking game has gotten better, the fight was still as close as the last one. Yeah. Went into the last fight in the last round of the first fight, not knowing who was yeah, going to win. I, yeah. And you went into the last fight round of this <laughs> fight, knowing that Usman May have been up, but it still ended up three to two on forty eight, forty seven yeah. on two cards. Yeah. So I thought that second I round think, should have been a ten eight round. I mean, if that second round wasn't a ten eight round, what is? Yeah. So I mean, I think it's so weird. The scorecards Need no are a judge little deceptive. I didn't think it was as close as the scorecards. Were there indicated. a couple times where um, Usman sl- slipped? That I think they, a lot of people that slipped they, that night. Yeah, I heard them talking about it afterwards yeah. that the cage was super slippery, but maybe those <clears> were construed as like he got. I don't know. No, I don't know. I, I, think the judge, I don't know what the judges saw. I don't pretend to understand. I don't agree that just one knockdown in a round makes it an automatic 10 8 because Agreed. so many other things can happen. Yeah. But there were two knockdowns in that round, weren't there? Yeah. And I think when you're almost remember. finishing a guy, you know, which it looked like he was almost about Unless to the finish. the guy it. had a big comeback in the round. Right. 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 Which yeah. that, that, that should. That's the definition of a 10-8 round. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good definition. It was a little bit weird, but hey, there was another great fight. There was another fight great, great on there fight. that was, uh, I thought was fight of the night if there was no Gagey Chandler fight, and that was Shane Burgos that we had talked about. Against, yeah, against Billy. And man, Billy just brings it, right? Uh, did you, did what you happened just, in that one? It, it went to the decision. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it the fight that was... It was, it was right before the Rose fight, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that fight would be fight of the night if there wasn't yeah. a, a Gagey and... Uh, it's a great Chandler. fight. Tremendous. I mean, yeah. the, the pace Dude, started... Dude, and the funny thing was the crowd was so quiet. Like, everyone... It was just because they came off such that uh, such a big high that no one was like... And I was like, you guys, this is a really good fucking fight. Like It's <laughs> hard to follow. That, that reminds me of watching the Joanna fight, right, against uh, Wei Lee. Lee. And then the next fight was Joel and Izzy, which was a... Yeah, no, which, we were there. Which was kind of a dead, <laughs> boring fight. But it was even exasperated by the fact that that was such like an epic fight. No, it's you like, remember oh, that? Like, how do, you, how yeah. do you follow that, right? But, but <laughs> yeah, that was, was just a great fight. I don't know if – obviously Chandler and Gagey deserve fight of the night, fight of the year maybe. Yeah. Um, I hope Burgos and Billy got fight of the night as well yeah. because they definitely deserve it. Yeah, that was sure. a great, great fight. I'm sure the UFC gave out their four performance bonuses like they always do. Right. But on a big card like that, when they come off a big high, there's no way they weren't stroking checks to other people yeah. on the side. Yeah, I'm I heard sure that they always kind of like give a little something extra usually anyways. Especially when it's deserved. Sometimes it might just be they're in a great mood and they might do it. Yeah. But a fight like that, there's what no way. What a crazy way, way to run a company. There's okay. no way those guys weren't. We'll talk about that. There's no way those guys weren't getting something extra at the end. Dude, fight that broke my heart was Frankie. Yeah, every, who's not a Frankie Edgar <clears throat> fan? I mean, watching him forever, he fights his ass off. He's, he's why I liked MMA. He's a 155 pound that? champ, right? And he was my favorite. He's my favorite fighter. Yeah, it's uh, tough to see a guy like that lose. And how old's Frankie now? 42, I think, maybe 43. I don't know. I think, yeah. Right in that early 40s age, but you know, he's been in some absolute wars. No, the no, Gray Maynard no. fights. I mean, they're just there's no, so that's many. That's the thing that's so hard too. Is like you can't. Father time waits for no man. Yeah. You know, you've been through m- more battle, like more wars than your He's average floated bear. floated through three different weight classes. Three different weight classes. Like Which it all takes it's a toll. Not, and, that, and that's that's why I, I loved Frankie as a fighter was he was always a dog, right? Like he, it didn't fucking matter. He was just going to, like he was going to dig deep, find a way, 155, ch- you know, just like awesome. Okay. I, I think as a, that is what, I love someone who has that ability, right? Like just to be like dig deep and like have this inner desire and drive. Because some people don't have that. Some people break, you know? He doesn't break. No. But he's at that point now where he doesn't like his body is. Yeah, he breaks physically. Yeah, like he, that's the hardest part is like, that's what what breaks my heart is like, it's not him. He still has it. You know, he still has that like bit in his mouth. Yeah. He just, his body like. How crazy is it that he looked at least to me, like he was by far the smaller man in that fight. At one yeah, he was the world champion at two weight classes ahead of that. I know. Yeah. Wow. Nice. You know, 
He's, he's probably got some miles on his body. He's 40 years you old, think? by the way, Primo told me. But, I mean, he wrestled prior to that. Probably had miles you know? coming into the sport. For sure. So For he, sure. he grinded a lot. Yeah. And that carried him through his pro career. Um, but yeah, an epic career for the guy, definitely a hall of famer. I mean, he's absolutely, you know, just a, yeah. a, 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 a great dude. Looks like he's a great dude a- outside the cage too. He's from Jersey. So that's just always a plus, right, Dan? When I was like, uh, when I was like 20 God's, years old God's or country. Oh my God. When I was like 20 years old, I had a sponsor and I had just won the, jun- the world championships in judo or something. And I had to go to New York and I did a photo shoot for the sponsor and he was also sponsored by them. And I remember like, I was like... You know, 20, I was really nervous. I was shy. I had never done anything like that. I was like, didn't know how to act. And he was so nice to me. Like, just like, and he was the champion at the time. Like, he was a big deal. And he was so nice. He was so, like, inviting. Didn't, like, made me feel like, oh, because I felt like, oh, what are you doing here? Like, you don't belong here. There's all these, like, MMA studs. And here I am, this, like, pudgy little judo player. Like, <laughs> Boy, that's going to be the fucking title. Uh, Pudgy little judo player joins a podcast. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm just trying to picture the quiet, nice. Oh, yeah, the shy. The shy, shy quiet Kayla, because yeah. we, missed, we missed that. Since, since then, I have blossomed. The shy, unassuming young girl. <clears throat> Now I'm an old now I'm, a fucking, now I'm a fucking <laughs> champion, motherfucker. So you, you say we're mean or old and crotchety and I all mean, those others. Are. It's a defense mechanism against <laughs> you. <laughs> I feel like yeah. Frankie Edgar right now. <laughs> My body's oh, breaking God. down. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that's tough to see. Yeah. I don't know what's next for him, but you know, we'll see. I'm Anyways. sure he's going to get a talk from Dana. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, let's move on then. Alex Pereira looked pretty good. They brought him in. Kickboxer. Oh, yeah. You know, he's with Glover Teixeira. Shout out to Glover. <coughs> Champ. Glover, Glover. Glover. Right? So it was pretty cool to see him have a fighter under his belt there. And and he looked pretty good at what he did, throwing that knee and, and finishing the fight. So he's a world-class kickboxer. You know, it's funny. You, you look at a guy like that and you think, okay, but what's the rest of his game mm. going to be like? He certainly didn't look too aware mm. on the ground on right. that. And the guy spent his whole life being an elite-level kickboxer. He's just starting to get into the other aspects of being a complete fighter. But then you look and you say, yeah, but the champion who may be more well-rounded in the other parts of the sport, he's not looking for a ground fight. I mean, Izzy's not looking to take right, anybody right, down. Right. That's literally going to be a kickboxing match, right. I would I would expect. So, wow. I mean, that guy might be closer to a title shot than you might think. Yeah. When you add the one win that he already has in him in another sport, it's a way to cross-promote it. Yeah. What other fights are people chomping at the bit to see at 185? Yeah. I mean, do you really want to see Vittori fight Izzy again after no. their, their, their second fight? There's I mean, other up-and-coming guys, that guy Petrosian. I'd watch who's Vittori had, do anything. He doesn't even want in the UFC yet. He looked amazing in the yeah, contender no, I'm just show. saying there's guys coming up that... Right? Is that, this my line? Whatever. What'd you say? Forget it. It's too late. Just cut that out for me, Primo. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I found What'd you say? Forget it. Sorry, we over-talked you. It's too late. I was... It's too late. Okay. You ruined it for me, oh, as oh, usual. Oh. All right. Okay. Good. Bobby Green fight Ally Quinta. Bobby so, Green looked good, didn't he? Yeah. And, or, did and, I, dang, or did I Quinta son. look bad? Yeah. I don't know. I think Al taking so much time off really hurts him. And How much time has he had off? I, th- I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess it was at least a year since we've seen him fight. I don't even remember who his last fight was. Yeah. I actually don't either. I'm thinking about it. What do you think about? I mean, obviously, when you're young in your career, you, 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 it was more of a, li- a learning time for you when you took your year off. But for people that are more advanced in their career, does I mean, ring rust is that is well, that a real thing? You're 31, right? So you yeah. took a year off yeah. when you were t- 29 or 30. Yeah. Just, but she was just learning the sport. I mean, I think that for me, I, it's always mm-hmm. better to stay active personally. Just because I, I also like that, the, the mental aspect of a fight, right? So the mental side of, like, getting in there, feeling the nerves, feeling the anxiety, feeling the pressure. Like, the only way you get comfortable doing that is by doing that. Yeah. You can't emulate that in sparring. You can't emulate that in any any outside way. So to keep fighting is is always what I think is best. But as you get older... I don't know, man. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if ring rust is a real thing or not. I think, I don't know. Well, it's, we're uh, going to find out this coming weekend because the main event is Jair Rodriguez against Max Holloway. Mm. Max has been active, having his wars every every fight. And then you look at Jair 
Yeah, and, and, and look is? at his schedule. He fought Frankie Edgar in May of 17. Mm-hmm. He then did not fight again until November of 18, mm. which is a year and a half mm-hmm. almost. <clears throat> he had that crazy fight with the zombie where he won with one elbow. second yep, left yep, with the yep, crazy yep. up elbow. He then he then sat on the sidelines for another year almost to only fight for 15 seconds. And he had the eye poke with Jeremy Stevens. So, I mean, I don't know how much ring rust you, you wiped off there. He then sat for another 13 months before fighting Stevens again. And that was two years ago. And he hasn't fought since. Jesus. So, I mean, it's, it's really like two real fights how in four he? and a half years. Yeah, here is, he was born in 1992. He's 29 years old. He's, he's a young man. It's also one of those things that everybody's different, man. You can't like put a lit, you can't stamp an answer on it. Like it's such an individual sport and it's really just about what you're comfortable with, you know? Like the, Big Jim always, my judo coach always has this saying, like there, there's thoroughbreds and there's workhorses. So if you have a thoroughbred and you, and you run that thoroughbred every day, it's going to go lame. It's going to get, you know, it's going to die. You can't, you can't run a thoroughbred every day. You have to save it for the race, and then it's going to go shine, you know? And then you have workhorses. Now, you have to take that horse. Uh, that's a plow horse. You got to fucking plow those fields every day. You got to fucking work that horse every day. If that horse takes a day off, it fucking drops over dead. So some people are workhorses, and some people are thoroughbreds. So can we call you a plow horse? I mean, Big Jim does. All right. It's a compliment, then. It's such bullshit, though. I said, I said, after you win the Olympics, you should automatically become a thoroughbred. Like that, does that not like? Do you not just like, da da? Like you get elevated. I mean, I worked twice as hard for the second Olympics, so I got my answer. (laughs) Do you think if you didn't work twice as hard, you wouldn't have won the second one? I wouldn't have won if he didn't make me do what I did. I wouldn't have won. I fucking hated him. But how much better were you at the second Olympics than the first Olympics? How much did you improve in that sport? uh, I didn't get scored on. So you, no, that's like everyone got scored on the you in the second Olympics. Would you have destroyed the you in the first Olympics? 100%. And how about the you now versus you I would a eat, year ago? I would fucking kill me. So like the, literally I might die. So the you that won the PFL the first time, the 2019 fought, PFL yes. champion fought 2021 PFL champion. Yeah. She would probably get her ass. Like she would probably survive. I'll, I'll give her that. Like I'll give her the credit of like having heart. But I would beat her ass for five rounds. Like, I would make her life miserable. Yeah. Two years worth of improvement. You know, I yeah. see it here in the gym all the time. You know, I yeah. see it here in the gym and what I you do. I see it too. And, yeah. I, I agree with so, you a thousand percent. So Thanks, guys. I, sh- shout out to the coaches there, right? 100%. So it's Mike no. Brown, yeah. who does your overall game planning and, yeah. and, and strategizes with you. And Coach Anderson does your striking. Yeah. He's taking you to a certain level. And Mako, who's there working with your takedowns and entries and all that stuff. And no, I wouldn't be all the, those guys the playing, fighter I am if it weren't for that. Yeah, all those guys blend pretty shout well together. Shout out to Richie for sometimes, like, giving me a kick in the ass, telling me you know let's go stop crying shout out to you for taking it Boy, I just we, think... all, we all play roles right we all we all need 100%. it sometimes what's his role by the way can you define uh, his I mean, fucking role just like takes up space I take the credit doesn't he I, mean, I like it's one of those things you uh you, you just kind of have to put up with him because he built the place but like good point because <laughs> he signed my check <laughs> I took you to AEW wrestling oh my god you made my dreams and you come true you actually got a response from fans for the first time in your life oh fuck you didn't hear the pop you didn't hear the pop when she won yeah I was <laughs> I because everybody knew what was, I was coming I know it was like I was kind of bummed. Like, even I was just like, oh, it's over now. Like, no one was really excited when I won. And I, I hope yeah, nobody yeah, ever gets excited, we excited, excited for a win. We I, I hope every it. fight you have, you go into with everybody <laughs> saying, oh, fuck, here comes another. I mean, that would be great. Domination, that right? That would be great. But I'm not letting you off the hook that easy because this is the person who said she would never get into MMA oh God, because really they're shit talking. Go. I'll never get into MMA because they're shit talking. It's not true professionalism. Then she gets in MMA and she starts shit talking, but says, I would never do pro wrestling because that's shit talking to the nth degree. It's stupid. And blah. Did you, you probably didn't watch. I You've didn't never watch. changed your mind, Dan. You've never said, hey, I'm not going to eat past eight. And then all of a sudden you find <laughs> yourself with a bag of pretzels and it's 835. Just You've pretzels. never changed your mind. Hey, just pretzels. It was 730 somewhere. <laughs> okay. In Guam. She was walking down the ramp to get to the ring already flexing her muscles, kissing them, 
and telling people to suck things that she doesn't even have on true. her body. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I was there. I heard her. But that's not what you were asking. Yeah, we, okay, thanks, thanks. <laughs> First of all, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do it all the way. I'm not going to half-ass anything. So if I'm going to go to your stupid show and watch you pace in the back, practicing your lines, <laughs> and see how absolutely obsessed you are with these men in tights and these fucking weirdos, if I'm going to go there and support you, Dan, then I'm going to do it with my whole heart. So you're the normal one in the room. I would think if she was with you and the rest of these fucking dweebs, yeah, she was the normal one. I mean, you can't call me normal. I'm just like, I'm at a different... A different higher level athlete. Yeah, like I'm just at a different level. You're actually an athlete. I'm actually an athlete. Were you or were you not impressed by the show? I was impressed by the... The guys that were there, the girls that were there, the performances they did, and the reactions from the crowd. Yes or no? I don't think I watched any of it, to be honest. First of all, I was eating the food in the back. I was surprised you weren't with me, but he was so... This is the one time I've ever seen Dan miss food. He was so nervous about his lines and practicing that he didn't mean eat. It wasn't just off the cuff? <laughs> he needed to spit these um, lines off the cuff, Kayla? I was impressed with I was impressed with the <laughs> ambiance this. with the fans, okay? Like, when that Jericho guy came out, we talked about this. When he came out and you were like, cut that shit off, you know, his song, and then all of the fans serenaded him. And they all just hate. I mean, I loved the fans because they hate you. Like, I was like, I can get behind these yeah, guys. But that's, but that's universal. <laughs> the way they voice their appreciation. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I do enjoy, like, uh, you know, I have a new I have a new ringtone because of that show. I'm a fat face dipshit. <laughs> that's, that's fucking great. <laughs> I enjoyed that part of it. She never gets to hear it because nobody calls. This is true. He's not wrong. I'm going to start calling you. You, fucking, you don't even text me, so don't get me started. This is true. Okay? Um, you almost didn't come today. I thought about blowing you off. That's awesome. I really did. You, when, you didn't, when I text you last night and I said, you, all you have to say is, I need you, and you didn't respond, I was livid. Like, I couldn't sleep. I was so angry. Did I was you, like, this motherfucker. Did, I almost FaceTimed you, but then I was like, oh, he probably won't answer. Do you I know what the payback would have been? How long would it have taken him to get over it? That's why I came, because I just was like, I can't. You know, well, first new, off, new year, new me. I'm first, gonna, I'm gonna like. <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with Richie's like petty little like, <laughs> drama fit fest. For, well. First off, did you know Narcos Three just came out, and oh I was trying God. to watch Narcos Three, and you guys are having this like little. For those of you who don't know, Richie just found Netflix during the pandemic. <laughs> I did. She just joined yeah. like the what, the human race. The, what are hey, the, but, what's the generation called now? I don't even know what they're called. But didn't Dan invite you on the show? Didn't. Dan say, hey, yeah, I'm advising. I'm not here for Dan, Richie. I don't know what you don't understand about that. I'm here for one person and one person only, and that's me. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting to see who would step up and be the bigger adult between the two. Obviously me. Not to my surprise. It was Ken. Has Richie ever been the bigger man about anything ever in the history of your friendship? Okay, friendships are that's okay. deep. In that's, a little, that's, that's a little deep, Kayla. Sorry, don't you're get, right. You're don't right. Don't get I, fucking. You're right. This no. Isn't like a, no. See, never, not once. And I knew that. Well, I knew that someone had to be the hero that we need. Well, I'm, I'm usually right, so why should I? I? Like, think of how how much worse the world would be off if I didn't come on here today. So. I had to step up. I think Dan is right. You're fucking stay where you're at. <laughs> stay where the fuck you're at. <laughs> you love me. You know you're obsessed with me. Five years from now, what are we calling you? And not a plow horse, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe you'll call me some kind of other animal. What do you see yourself five years from now? I mean, I want to go down as the greatest. It's not a secret, you know? I, uh, I have big goals, big dreams. I'm obsessed with being the best. I think I can do it. I know I can do it. You know, it's not a matter of like, maybe when I started off, I was a little hesitant. You know, I was like, can I really do this? Am I really capable? Can you climb two mountains in your lifetime athletically? But I know I can. Well, you know how high the bar is because... You're not I, only I have friends the bar. with Amanda, you yeah, train with Amanda. I have you the bar. That is the bar. The, the bar how, is, how good is Amanda? She's the greatest of all time. And when you train with her and see how good she is, does that inspire you? Does Absolutely. That- Absolutely. It does nothing but, uh, for me, it's nothing but inspiring and motivating. And I, like, 
everyone's always like, oh, they train together, they're gonna fight each other. Like, I, everyone yeah. always kind of wants to like dramatize it and stuff, but it's it's nothing but good. I think for both of us, it's like when you have two high level athletes training together every like not every day, but training together on a consistent basis, constantly. Like, all right, the last let's say the last year. I got 1% better every day, right? Like I was training with guys, I was I was putting in the work, I'm doing everything. When you have someone who is that good, who is your size, who's athletically gifted, who's the best in the world, and you also have me who's a psychopath who wants to be the best in the world, who's I will say I'm athletically athletically gifted, who has enough experience to absorb what they're doing and, and like see things do like just like the the chess match of it all. You're no longer getting 1% better in those training sessions. You're getting 10% better, 15%. Like you're you're exponentially growing. You've competed against high-level female athletes obviously. You were yeah. in two Olympics, how many world championships, yeah. etc. Where does Amanda rank in just the feel of her being an athlete and being good at what she does? I mean, there's probably one that. girl, the French girl that I fought in the finals of the Olympic Olympics, um, my second Olympic. She's the strongest girl I've ever trained with. She just literally was like Unless you could wear her down and mentally break her, it felt like you were, like, going up against a brick wall, you know? Just very physically gifted. Um, how about as far as athleticism and how she moved Athletic, a big hard struggle. to get her on her back, hard to hard to be a step ahead of her. Just natural, good instincts, fast twitch, you know, fibers all firing. Amanda is not as physically strong as Audrey, but everything else is head and shoulders above Audrey. Like, just like a, a specimen, you know? Were you surprised when you first went with Amanda? Or was it what you expected? I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I had only been sparring for like a couple months. And right. The very first time I went with her was my first week here. And I got, you know, my ass whooped. I remember watching you and her train for the Felicia Spencer fight. And I, I said, I'm just going to wait and sit back and I'm going to ask Amanda after the fight. Because everybody knew Felicia's game plan. She wanted to put a man up against the fence. She wanted to try to take her down from there and try to control her, try to wear her out. And I remember, you know, a lot of your training would be starting with you with an underhook. Yeah, her up yeah, against they the were fence putting and, her in bad <clears throat> positions. Yeah, yeah, putting her in the bad positions. And I remember <laughs> going up to Amanda after the fight at some point saying, hey, after training with Kayla and feeling Kayla in that position, how'd Felicia feel in that position? And Amanda's like, man, I felt like nothing in that yeah. position. And then I can, I'm can. i going to ask you the same question at some point when you get to train with Amanda no, exactly. and feel her coming That's in and taking yeah. punches at you, and then you, you feel it with somebody else. I mean, it just makes both of you so much better. It also gives, for me personally, I hope it is for her, I hope it's as beneficial for her as, as it is for me, but, like, that's what I mean when I say that confidence, you know? Like, I'm like, I'm going with the, the best bitch in the world, and, like, I have confidence in myself because of that. Like, I know that whoever it is, it ain't going to be no Amanda. Right. You know? Was, like, so, it ain't going to be let me like ask that. You, let me ask you a question because I'm curious about this. If you take Amanda and you take a guy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. around Amanda's size who can do what Amanda can do because we have guys in the gym that can do what Amanda yeah, can sure. do, obviously. I have training partners You're like not going to yeah. find girls in the world that can do what Amanda <laughs> does, but we have guys that can do that. The training with a guy who can mimic Amanda and do exactly what Amanda does, what's the difference in feeling no. that with another no. woman? No. no. First of all, well, men and women are different. Yep. Like just center of gravity, strength, power, all of that stuff. It does, you're never going to find a guy who moves like a girl. I don't care who they are. Even, anyway, never mind. And uh, second of all, whether you like to admit it or not as a female, and this is hard for me because I always want to be pushed and, and guys can't, they don't give a, a hundred, you know, on you. Like they're never going to like, they're never going to knock you out. They're never, you're never in real danger. And you know that in the back of your mind. When I'm going with my training partner, Anthony, I know that I'm not in real danger of, like, getting submitted or getting, like, he's not going to, he's not going to hurt me. When you go with some of these girls, okay, first of all, they're batshit crazy. It's a cat fight. And, we yes. see it out here. Yeah. But you all, it's, I mean, going... Like, that's a real, it's real training. It's real honest-to-God training, and you don't get that very often. So that's why I'm just super grateful for it. I mean, it's... Because we can get guys to train with you to push you, but it's it's almost impossible to find girls that can really but push you. But this is what's so, this is why I'm so lucky, is it's not even, it's, it's real honest-to-God training, and it's with the best fighter in the world. Yeah. 
think. The best of all time. Yeah. Not even the best in the world right now. Presently, you're talking about the best female fighter in the sport. Right. In the exactly. history of the sport. That's what I mean, man. And like, it's just like, that's, I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm so blessed. We're, we're, we're lucky because both of you are in the gym at the same time yeah. when we get to see it and, and see where Amanda is. And, and also, and, it's and just really enjoyable, by the way. Like, just yeah. to also add, not that it, it has to be or it couldn't be better, but like, I also really like Amanda. We get along good. And she is similar to me in the sense that when it's time to, to come in and put on your work boots and work, like, we're not, like, out there, like, shooting the shit, like, oh, what do you, you know, like, we're in there and we're grinding. And it's an hour, hour and a half training session, and it's, I leave feeling so much better about myself. And then, yeah, afterwards we shoot the shit and we, like, talk about our kids, you know, which you guys obviously don't care about. But when we're um, in there, we're my training. My kids were going to win titles for us, I'd care. Yeah, that's, okay. And anyways. Let's just not talk about kids because I feel like I'm not going to go down that road with you two. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just pretend like. Okay, mom. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah. I mean, I just am like, obviously, I couldn't be happier to be here, to be at this gym. Aside from, like, this part of the room, everything about it is amazing. Get on this side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was all about to change for you had you not shown up to Richie's podcast. Yeah, I know. That's why I had I to make I already told Primo. I said, Primo, <laughs> like, we... hey, I said, Primo, I said, deactivate this motherfucker's card. And he goes, I- I've got to go upstairs and do that. <laughs> can we uh, Can we go ahead and clear the air on one thing, though? Uh-oh. You've had a lot of people come in here and talk shit about me, you know, trash my name, in here? tarnish my what reputation. You mean, on this podcast? You've worn specific shirts to tarnish my reputation. To Uh-oh. belittle me. Uh oh. He has. I feel like at this point in time, Richie, I've come on your podcast, even though you didn't specifically ask me. I've stepped up to the plate. I've made it a great episode. Carried this team. Again. It's time for you to acknowledge the fact that I'm the team captain. Hope that camera's on Richie right now. Don't put any pressure on him. This is a conversation between Richie and I. It's time for you to acknowledge. That I have done a lot. I'll acknowledge this. I've worked my ass off. I helped bring this team to a different level. Don't look at me. She's I asking helped, you. I helped bring this team to a different level. I'm a great teammate. I'm a great training partner. I'm always here to help guide new young prospects. I'm always supportive of our new young prospects. And also, I'm the love of your life. I help keep you sane. I put a smile on your face every goddamn day. And if that doesn't make me team captain, I don't know what does, because nothing makes you smile. So, Richie, please acknowledge the fact that I'm the team captain. I didn't invite you on this fucking show. Dan did. What does her bio say on the website? On the website? I think I took it down. Oh, did you? Yeah. The entire website. (laughs) Stop it. You're not a team captain. You're going to break my heart right now. Don't. You're a great training partner. You're a great teammate. Oh, my God. You're he's a great really champ. Do this right now. Wait, oh, now you want my help? Yeah. Okay, now you can chime in. If he's really not going to, after that, you're not, after that heartwarming, hold on, you're not honest a team captain. to God, Let, genuine, that you, was a genuine dialogue just okay. now. I was vulnerable with you okay. and honest with you. Well, you're not laying on a psychologist's couch, so let's relax. Yeah. You should. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I might never get up. <laughs> you drown in your oh, pool Jesus. of tears. Yeah. But uh, there's some stories I would really like to tell. But anyways. Hey, you're All right, awesome. moving on. You're awesome. <laughs> That's it. You're awesome. What do you want me to say? I won't forget this. I know. But you don't like people bullshitting you, so I'm telling you the truth. It's got awkward. <laughs> Bellator on Friday. Yeah. Bellator. I'll hey, be we're there. going out to dinner. Are we doing dinner? Oh, another I'm story. I'm uh, doing Tony Robbins thing, so I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to go from oh, Tony Robbins. I was talking to Dan. <laughs> you know what? Thanks, Dan. It's been a real pleasure chatting with you. Did you today. invite her to dinner? Of course, I was going to invite her to dinner. You are. You are. You want to talk about doghouse? Do not call me. Do not text me. Do not ask about me. Don't fucking. Don't look at my belts in the case. Don't look at my pictures on the wall. There's one belt in the case, by the way. Belts now. There's it's been one. ordered. Okay. It's there. It counts. I'm just kidding. I don't really care. Seriously, I really don't, don't care what you think about me. So. Well, it's mutual. But are you are you coming to dinner? No, I told you I'm going to be with Tony Robbins. Are you really? Yeah. Big time. What are you us. and Tony Robbins doing? Um, before my fight, I had a I had talked with him. Just had like a little bit of a. You giving him a pep talk? I gave him a pep talk. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, no, obviously he's just like a. He's. Been, I, 
I don't fangirl over anyone. Like, I don't really care if you're Johnny Depp or I don't care. Um, never been, like, a starstruck or anything like that. But I've always been a really big fan of Tony Robbins. Just what he's accomplished, what he's done with his life, where he came from, what he turned it into. His uh, mental... He's just a mental giant, you know? Like, I, I call him, like, a spiritual gangster because he's just got his shit together. Um, so I've always been a big fan of him, and um, Ali worked it out, so I got to talk to him before my fight. And then he invited me to his event here. Uh, it's called, like, Unleash the Power Within, I think. So it's one of his seminars. And then I think we're going to meet and have lunch after that. And He was great in Shallow Hell. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? It's really you could, you could you, you, could, you, you could use to read a couple of his books, you two little, like... Mental midgets. So you're going to go to lunch with him. That means you, you're not going to dinner? I'm going to I'm... You're going to fanboy afterwards with him? No, I think... So the seminars are supposed to be like... Apparently it's very intense and like all day type of thing. So... Right. Did she just discount AEW wrestling and go crazy blah, blah, blah over Tony fucking Robbins? Are, are you, you not... A, wait, are you not a Tony Robbins fan? Compared to AEW wrestling? Oh, my God. Do you know what Tony Please Khan do. would do to Tony Robbins? Tony Khan would beat the shit out of Tony Khan, Robbins. Whatever Tony Robbins, You don't even know what you're saying off. anymore. Whatever. He's like, he's just, it, no. Are you kidding me? Are you going to the fights? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Cool. See you at 10. Oh, actually, the uh, undercards. Just Main cards seven. at 10. Undercards at 7. We got a bunch. We got like four people on the undercards. Yeah. On the so undercard, we, we Want to yeah. talk about that for a minute? Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> Can I got. leave yet? I'm... Yeah, you can go. Okay. You have to go? I don't have I don't have to. Please. But. Do you want to hear about our teammates? You want to talk about yeah, them? You okay, want to offer yeah. some insight right, into them? All right, let's offer some insight. I mean, you're the fucking okay. athlete. All right. All right. So, do you know Sebi, the Egyptian uh, wrestler that's here? Curly headed. Yep. Yeah. So he's he's the wow in depth analysis on Sebi. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kayla. You can go now. Yeah. <laughs> You mean the curly headed guy? I was gonna say curly headed fuck, but I thought that was. I thought, wow. And somebody says I curse too much. <laughs> yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. I've seen him train. Okay. He's fighting on the show. So he's, oh, cool. Yeah. So I think he's 3-0, Sebi. And, um, As think, a pro? Yep. And I think he's won all his fights basically. He's by newer to the team, so excuse me for not knowing everything about him. I mean, I've watched him train a little bit. Should, who's he fighting? Uh, I mean, Ethan Hughes. He's, yeah. What's the guy's Sebi's background? Sebi's a big underdog. I mean, Sebi's no, a big favorite. big favorite. Big favorite. Yeah. Um, Last minute fight. Just part of his building process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I expect nothing but greatness from our athletes, especially yeah. former wrestlers, former Olympians. Yeah. I and mean, then, he should dominate. And then it works right into uh, Cody Law's going to have his fight coming up. Oh, yeah, I'm excited against about this. Colton Ham. Um, Cody's think, a big prospect. He's a big favorite in this fight, and I think he's going to end up coming out. He's really well rounded. Yeah. He's very well disciplined. He's very disciplined. Very like well almost coached. too disciplined. A little bit uh, anal. Yeah. Like, That's good. Like to, he needs to loosen up a little bit. Have wow, some, you're, you're telling somebody to loosen up is funny. Well, I mean, he's just like, oh, I can check my Fitbit, and I yeah. did this many, and my whoop is this, and I got a, oh, man, I, I really, my heart rate went through the roof on this, and I'm like, bro, just train, like, come Dude, a lot of people talk about that being so scientific yeah. and so detail-oriented and everything. He really is. No, no. It's like, not a gimmick with him. No, no, like, to, like, the nth degree. I kind of like it. All right, well, how about Valerie Lareda? Super Sp- excited about this comeback fight, you know? She had a little bit of a... Speed bump? Had a little bit of a speed bump in her in her last fight, you know. I think that one thing I talked to her about and one thing that as, as a fighter you need to understand is, like, failure can be your fuel. You know, you can choose what you do with it. You can choose how a win, how you react to a win or a loss. And um, Speaking of somebody trying to take your head off when you train. Oh yeah, no perfect example. You got no. That's that's what I mean though. I love going with her. I love going with girls because it's like her and Isis. Like I'm like I could get knocked out. Like they're smaller than me, but they're throwing a hundred. Yeah. So if you, if you look at Val's <clears throat> social media, you would get this impression of mm-hmm, her. Mm-hmm, no, and if mm-hmm. you watched her when she trains, it is a completely yeah. different nah, she's impression. A dog, she's man. coming. Yeah, she's Val, coming to kill Val, people. Val's Val's a. a a tough girl. She is. I don't really Absolutely. say that too much about Absolutely. people, but uh, she comes in here. She's a dog, man. She she no, spars yeah, hard. She's a dog. Yep. She spars hard. She trains hard when she's here, and um, she just needs to. She I has think parts her of her game fo- she needs to get better yeah. at. Fo- yeah, focus a little some, bit better in her fights. She's got some holes, and I think um, got some gaps in her game. One thing I really Dan? talked to her about uh, was <laughs> just you got to figure out what your priorities are. You know, 
got to figure out what what, I'm what your priorities are. Right. You know, 100%. and I think that it's really easy to be a young fighter and kind of go off the path a little bit, stray off the path and get lost. In, you get in caught the, up in the bullshit. Yeah, you get caught up. Yeah, exactly. To get so just showing up, up here and busting <clears throat> your ass while you're here isn't I mean, what's the, one thing, what's, the, what's the one thing that you always say to me? Like when I, because I, everyone's, I'm, everyone's human. Like we all have tendency like, oh, I'm worried about this or I'm worried about that or I'm uh, thinking about, um, you know, Instagram likes or I'm thinking about, oh, how much money am I going to get paid? Win or I'm thinking, your fucking fights. fights. That's, that's it. Uh, you said that to me on day one, and I feel like I, that's what I have to tell myself a couple everything. times a week. Yeah. You know what matters? Win your fights. You know how you win your fights? You show up. You do what you need yeah. to do. You train fucking hard. You trust your coaches. You put in the work. Winning solves all. Posting on Instagram doesn't help you win a fight. Getting no, a sponsor doesn't help you fight. Doing an interview doesn't help you win a fight. Right. I mean, you can have all the likes in your world. You lose fights. You become irrelevant pretty quick, don't you? You, you have do. to keep. You have to keep your priorities in line. You know, like yeah. that, that's the one thing. Like for me, it's the kids. My fights, yeah. everything else doesn't but, matter. But I get I, I get it in this. I know you put the fights before my kids, but yeah. wow. you have to have some kind of. Oh, I assumed you meant that way. It was just You were getting the lesser important out of the way first. Oh, my God. Can you, you provide a much better life for your kids if you keep winning your fights? Well, that's a, that's a part of it, right? Like you have, like realistically, yeah. I pay now and give them a, a good life. I mean, you have to have balance. Like I'll, I want to be present with them. That's why I don't really have a social life. That's why I don't really hang out with older Mature fatter men. men, you know. That's why I don't get to go to dinner and do stuff. Is because because you, you're going to Tony Robbins. Mental. Something's gonna something's gonna suffer. So I train really hard. I spend any time that I'm not with my kids, I'm pretty much here. She called me one time while we were at dinner. I think somebody put something up that we were at dinner with brownie and Mako. She's like, "Hey, you motherfucker! <laughs> I didn't get invited to come." I said. You wouldn't have come. You got these little fucking rugrats at your house. You're not fucking coming on this night at this time. And your response was, I know I'm not coming, but I still want to say no. I reserve the right <laughs> to say no. I, am, I take great pleasure in saying I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Roman Feraldo. Yeah, Roman's a stud. Like him. Yeah, he... He knows what, I'm the team captain. What do you mean, in what way? No, I like him. Oh, He's a okay. good kid. He knows I'm the team How captain. How quickly is he getting better? Very quickly. I mean, you see it like Exponentially. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I talk a lot of shit to him, you know, about his takedowns and his takedown D and stuff like that. But he's the the impressive part about him is he takes the time and uh, puts himself in the uncomfortable positions to work with people who are better than him. There, you know, I see him working with Johnny Eblen. I see him working with. Um, work with Masvidal. Work with DP. Yeah, you know, I DP him brought him in just before, which is he's a really good training partner. Great he athlete. Switch dances. Yep. He can get a yep. lot of different. Great looks. athlete. But I see him not being afraid to. To put himself out there in training, yeah. which sometimes for guys, you, I've noticed can be tough. You know, like you don't want to, you don't want anyone to get the best of you. And I'm like, bro, it's training. Nobody right. cares. Like, I'm actually really surprised in his learning curve and how quickly he's progressing. You wouldn't think when he opens his mouth, but <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. Wow. Real <laughs> talk with Kayla Harris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Curly headed well, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Roman's got a high ceiling, <clears throat> and he's a hundred percent. His striking is is on point and getting better. He's a really good athlete. His his takedowns are mm-hmm. going to get better, and I think his ground and pound and finishing is going to get even better. So it's funny sometimes when you how see how many people, fights does he have? I don't even know. He's five? four and zero or five and zero at this oh, point. Oh yeah, no, you for see sure. people come to the gym and you can't help but like say, okay, I see this guy going here. I see this girl getting to this level or mm-hmm. whatever. You kind of get that in your head, and dude, after twenty fucking five years, you, you're you're right more often than you're wrong. I remember when he came to the gym, I said, oh, kid's got some talent. I could see him being like at this level. He's already at that level. Yeah. And it's like a year into it. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, when Kayla came to the gym, what did you say? You want to know the truth? No, no, lie to me. No, lie to us, Dan. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Lie to me. (laughs) Like every other man. (laughs) He told me she was coming. And I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. You know, it's a a big bodied, strong, athletic chick who's going to be a good look for like Amanda or whatever. Whatever, you know, (laughs) judo. we'll, We'll see. I walked into the gym. I remember the day I walked into the gym. She was on the mat facing the other way. And I think she had just like worked out. So it was a little yoked up. And I saw this fucking V going like this. And I saw the hair. And I'm thinking, said he? Oh, what the? <laughs> I'm like, I see so I saw the shoulders. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Holy shit. And I immediately went up and said, hi, I'm Dan. Nice to meet you. And I was like, all of a sudden, nice. I was like, damn. That was my, that was my first reaction. And I think I was actually polite. 
You were for about two seconds. And, and then, then, like, the next day, Savage told you I said something about you and, and Yoel. Yeah, and something <laughs> wild. And I was like, oh, okay. That's how these guys roll. Yeah. I'm going to fit in just fine. Yes, you And you did. And I did. Yes, you did. I blossomed. Yes. So we kid around with you a lot, man. You are an awesome teammate. You're an awesome training partner. You're, you know, you got, you're pretty focused on... I'm an awesome crush too, huh? Yeah, you are. You're the best, man. You are the fucking <laughs> best, but you're not the fucking team captain. Let's just cut that sh- oh my God. chicanery out. Yeah. What would Kayla in your mind have to do to become a team captain? It's like Well, Dan, I don't really think it's up to me, although it is, but <laughs> it should be if she's team captain, it should be voted on by the team. I see in my mind, I look at I don't think there's any team captain, but if I was gonna think of who is, it should be somebody who has tenure on the team. I'd lean more towards George Mosfidel. Yeah, that's because you're obsessed with George. No, I mean, the what, guys... What qualities and traits of a leader does George Masvidal possess? I'm sorry. Because he's, the, like, what is this, high school? Because he's the most popular? He's, I don't think he's the most popular. I think he's the most popular more than I think he, 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 Dude, for the, you got to admit something. As much, and I know you love him, he swings on Masvidal's balls. Like, no, it's like, like um, no, it's, no, like, no, it's no, not no, even no. natural. Like, a grown man should fawn over another grown man Agreed. this much. Agreed. If, he, if Masvidal had a team jersey, like, if he had, like, a, you know, a foot, like... Richie would wear it every day. He'd sleep in it at night. He would. Agreed. And he likes nobody as as a rule. But George, George is loyal. That's why I like George. There's no question that there's dude's loyal. There's nothing wrong with, that, with liking someone for being loyal, but that, that's there, why. the obsession that there's, you have There's with no him, obsession. I, I, you know what I talk to George when he's at the gym? That's not true. We both called you one night, and you answered his phone call and not mine. Whoops. So. It was George. <laughs> All right. Everybody case. loves Masvidal. There's no doubt about it. Well, there you go. But when you talk team captain-wise, how long has he been here? 17 fucking yeah, years or something forever. like that? Something insane. If you take his 17 years, the first 15 of those years, he was the poster child for doing everything you can to fuck up your career. And, and he was still successful in spite of trying not to be successful. So... I'm not sure that George set the blueprint for how everybody needs to approach their Dan, career. Also, it's not Dan, like you don't George is like George Dan, you don't isn't think like out here like helping these kids. Dan, you don't like, think? Yes, he is. Oh, George will help people. Yes, yeah, no, no, he'll oh, help even people. At this no, no, no. But what I'm saying is like he's still not exactly a role model. I'm not talking know, outside talk the gym. He still does shit, shit that he should not do. Shit. Come on. I love George too. Okay, I do. Oh, I love him there too. You go. That's a big fucking but story. Right there. Everybody loves George. Everybody loves George. What's How not could the you love? Not? He, no, he's a great guy. He yeah. he is good to have in the room too. Like his um, he energy. Always, he always brings my energy up. He always makes me feel better. Like I'm always like, all right, well, George is here. I gotta train even harder and show him that I am the team captain. So I don't think people understand the dynamic here in this gym <laughs> of how much balls get busted on a daily basis. Oh, and, my gosh. And, and no, they, if people could be a fly on the yeah. wall in this place. And we try to give them a little piece here, and it's funny, like, you'll see some of the comments, like, you're fucking rude to these fucking people. Oh, my God, like, if they only knew. I'm not even rude to this them. This is us like, on our best behavior. Yeah. Well, you too. And it's all, in, and it's all in good fun, and it's I don't think people really understand how much fun no, we that's have in here. I think joke. And, that's the beauty of it is, like, you, everything is... Like, n- nothing is malicious. You right. know, everyone's... It's all in good fun. Dan's malicious. Rich, sometimes. Richie has the Dagestanis on our team talking shit <laughs> yes. and yes. laughing their balls off. Yeah. Those it's, guys that's are great. Kind of, it's that's, great. That's, that's a different kind what, of what break What do you think about different. all those guys that are in here, like, from these different countries, uh, from Dagestan and the training? And Yeah, I love them. Yeah. I think they're great. They're good for the team, you know? Did you get to train and compete a lot against the Russians in judo and all that? Did Yeah. Um, the Russian Olympic team actually... We became really good friends with them. They had, in 2012, they had their most successful Olympic team ever. They won three gold medals on the men's side. And then after the Olympics, for some reason, they wanted to go on vacation. And they decided that Boston in, like, February was where they were going to go. Well, that is <laughs> like probably summer. for them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, so they came and they stayed with us, trained, and, like, just, I mean, they have awesome lives. Like, talk about being an Olympic champion in Russia. They one of them like bought a Mustang and like shipped it back wow. and like I was like wow. oh I got a check for twenty five grand but that's cool you know like they're like it what's cool is they're you, awesome people you look though. at this country and it seems like once every Olympic cycle somebody stands out and becomes America's darling or mm-hmm, sweetheart or mm-hmm, whatever mm-hmm. and everybody else hey here's your medal here's mm-hmm. your little life. yeah of course whatever yeah of course you go to certain countries you want a gold medal in, no, in no, Japan. You're a hero. No, you're, you're a, a hero. You're a fucking hero you for life. You are a life. national hero. You are a national treasure. Yeah, you're a propaganda fucking puppet for that country is what you are. 
No, Dude, they, they, they take respect pride. It. No, they take pride <clears throat> they in it, and it's like it's a thing of national honor to go and represent your country. Oh, without on a doubt, the I think it stage. is. And, I agree. and the problem with America is we're spoiled, right? Like, I always remember if you like wear a Team USA thing or after the Olympics, and it's like, oh, did you go? Did you go compete in the Olympics? And I'm like, yeah. What's the number one question you always get asked? What medal did you win? Yeah, did you win? If you're an American, did you win? Wasn't well, it all there's about no, winning? I mean, yeah, but okay. there's no pride in like, oh, you represent like, there's no nobody cares that that and that's our society. But but Guil- I think a lot guilty, of athletes have guilty that. because when I was younger, I watched everything in the Olympics and you followed their stories and you watched all of it. Now it's like I look at the the medal count, you know, when it pops up on the ESPN, yeah. I, I don't really follow it like I yeah. like I did. Maybe it's because we're just busy in, in what we do now, and we yeah, have another sport so that busy. we're immersed you're in. So much going on. <laughs> oh I'm talking God. about AEW. Oh, I gotta write my promo. Dude, every Wednesday night. No. Sometimes it's I'm Friday not even rampage. That, fast. <laughs> that was for you. <laughs> Hold on, let me text these guys and make sure they can come with me. Let me confirm them. Hey but guys. It's, it's it's pretty cool watching other countries react to their Olympic well, champions. Well, I mean, it's the way it should be everywhere. Well, I mean, I well, look think at the, so too. It's great to see the, the the female wrestler who was so proud to represent the United States, and she was at yeah. your PFL. And I'm I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Oh, she was a badass. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Now it's gonna leave. It, it's blank in my. I head. mean, that's awesome. That's that a great story. Fucking badass. Yeah. 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 But Can't the pride she took in it, you yeah. know, also loved it. I mean, that's kind of something that our country Lacks could a use a little bit. more of, I feel like. Amen to that. Just that feel-good pride and where you come that. from. There's so many judo players who, like, there's a, a girl from, oh, my God, what's the country? Like, she's going to end up being, like, the first, like, she's going to end up being the president of her country. She wow. won the uh, She won the country's first medal ever, and it was a gold medal. Wow. Kelmindy. Where the hell is Kelmindy from? Primo, look it up. K E L M E N D I. Anyways, like th- they. I don't know her first name. Her last name's Kelmindy. K E L M E N D I. Fifty two kilos. Judo. And Khabib's like that in Dagestan. The right. guy's yeah. a national right. treasure. Right. Exactly. For what he's accomplished. And all the Russians cool are like, like they're all like in politics now, or they're like they have, you know, they were set up to run their own clubs, or they're set up to teach judo to kids, or they're like. And they're famous. They're famous where they, in Japan too, obviously it's the birthplace of judo, right. but, you know, if you're Kosei Inoue and you walk down the street, people are asking for your autograph and... Antonio Noki was their equivalent of a senator. Crazy. I mean, you don't... That definitely never happened to me in judo, you know? It's, it's well, such judo, a small sport in the United yeah. States. It's such a minuscule thing, but I won our country's first ever gold medal. Yeah. Kosovo? Yeah, Kosovo. Ko- Kosovo, yeah. Close of all, she's like going to end up being the president wow. or but some is there, shit. Is there a sport in the United States where you can go and win a gold medal and be a guaranteed star? No. I mean gymnastics, track and field, yeah. swimming. One per yeah. year comes out of that <coughs> lot. Yeah, it's your Mary Lou Retton here or a, a Carl Simone Lewis or Biles. Smiles. Yeah. I, mean, they, I don't know. All the the sweetheart or the or the Michael the Phelps comes yeah. out of yeah. one Olympic cycle a year. How That's many true. how That's many true. members of the female Olympic g- gymnastic team that won the gold. Five. You see her, and right. she's on the car, she's on the box of Wheaties. But right. how about the other four? Right, I mean, Dan. How many pe- how many of those people get into the sport to get the limelight? They don't, right? You don't go into wrestling. No, of even- course, and that's what you have to keep in mind. Like yeah. I never did judo because I wanted to be rich or famous right. or popular. Or, like I, you were achieving. A goal. I did it. I had a I had a goal. I wanted she did to be the she best. She wanted to get in into MMA. I I mean didn't even know it. I yeah. didn't even know it. You were, you're, you're, Judo was my first love, but MMA is my mature love. There you go. It's my real love. There you go. Strong. All right. Okay. Are we done here? Thank, Thank God. God. Are you going to sign our flag? Do I have, we have to? We, we yes. have a tradition. Okay. We'd, uh, we'd be honored if you did. I'd be happy to. Awesome. You want me to come over by you and do it? I'll bring it to you. Oh. No, I will bring it to you, queen. Wow, I'm telling you, Anna, you called her queen. <laughs> Wait, is that on tape? Who? She's not even here anymore. Oh, I saw you and her texting the other day, and the big old smile on your face. I wasn't going to tell Kayla. I'm sorry, what? Nothing. She FaceTimed me. No, she didn't. He answered it. I thought it was an Osprey. Where do you want to sign it? Okay, let me see. Probably the heart of it, eh? Where would the team captain this sign? This is black. Don't forget, so it won't show up on certain. Who signed right in the middle? Orlovsky. Oops. He can have it. I knew that's where she was going. So petty. I was like, fuck, how do you spell captain? 
Awesome. Thank Thanks, you, Kayla. Kayla. I appreciate we'll you coming you. out. See, see you Friday at Bellator and next week in the gym training, right? That'll be two yeah, weeks off. I'll be back. That's, that's um, about as long as you've ever taken off. Yeah. Thank God we got her out of here. <sighs> She's actually cool as fuck. Don't yeah. play this. Don't don't play that part, Primo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's awesome. Great to have Kayla here. Glad she stepped up. I mean, she's an awesome teammate, awesome person to have in our gym. And uh, I can see bigger things ahead for Kayla as she goes through her career. Um, like team captain type things at some point? Nah, that's a little bit too, too okay. big to shoot for. I don't, think she, I, I don't think she'll ever be a team captain. <laughs> Not as long as I'm here. But uh, great to have her here. Um, next week, we, we hope to have Mateusz Gamrot from Poland. He's a two-division KS, KSW champ, right? Yes, he was. 45 and, and 55. Yep. And, and he's a UFC fighter, and he's got a good... Three, three fights into his UFC career, three performance bonuses. Yeah, he's a pretty um, exciting guy. and uh, Coming off a big win over Jeremy Stevens, like, in a minute. He's calling people out that I'm like, holy shit, he's not here to dance around and, and, and make, you know, make friends. He's, he's looking to send that ladder pretty quick. Man, and, I'll tell you, after, after the Stevens fight... Mm -hmm. He's like, actually, he said the same thing before the Stevens fight. Hey, babe, boss, I, I need a fight. Let, let, let's give me a fight. I said, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call the UFC, see who who they have lined up for you. I'll get back to you with who they bring back. I don't care who they bring back. Just get me fight. Better guy, best guy you can get me. Best guy you can get me. I said, okay, well, I'll talk to him and I'll see the name that they have, and then I'll I'll call you back. No, no, no. You tell them yes. Whatever name they give you, yes. Just say please. Make him better than last guy. You know, he's just the attitude on that guy. If I could bottle that attitude and 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 have everybody in the gym drink it. Um, it'd be a good thing. Your Polish accent was on point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited about having him on. Just a little something different. I know the the Polish fans are 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 very behind him. I think as as they are most of their fighters, they're they're pretty rabid. They got some good fans. Huh? Yeah, so I'm excited about having him. But it was great having Kayla on um, and getting her perspective on just the training itself, the PFL, Cyborg, all the different the Olympics, the training, the mental side of things. Just everything she touched on was pretty good to hear from her perspective yeah she's a i don't know about outside the gym but inside the gym she got her head on pretty straight yeah good point um that's about it so if you're enjoying this podcast i'll uh rinse and repeat with the subscribe to it share it like it comment we'll get back to you uh whatever you have to say fire away and also give a little shout out we're going to do an ask me anything on reddit um thursday at 7 p.m so it's the mma subreddit so i guess it's mma forward slash r we're just getting used to that stuff. So me and you are going to do a AMA. If you want to fire away some questions there, feel free to join us on the on there Thursday. This Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be uh, answering questions for at least an hour. Cool. Maybe we'll give away a shirt for best question. Maybe. That's it, man. Hope you enjoyed it. We are out.